Hello friends, welcome to a new lecture on contraction stress test. Contraction stress test, in the last class we have learned about the tests of fetal well-being. This is the continuation of the same class, tests of fetal well-being. In the last class we have learned about the fetal movement count and then external cardiotocography and also non-stress test. In this class let us learn about the contraction stress test. So what is contraction stress test? It is similar to cardiotocograph and it is also performed using a cardiotocograph. We use cardiotocograph for performance of this test. This uh, this test is uh, performed for knowing the um, knowing whether the fetus is hypoxemic or whether the fetus is healthy. For example, in this test, we induce contractions. First, the patient lies in lateral uh, decubition position, decumbent position. That patient lies in uh, lateral decu uh, sorry lateral recumbent position, and in the recum lateral recumbent position, we will. Uh, uh, Stimulate the uterine contractions. How are we going to induce uterine contractions? We induce first the patient lies in lateral recumbent position and then we will induce uterine contractions. How are we going to induce uterine contractions? This is by either stimulation of nipple. We will either stimulate nipple or we administer IV intravenously, we give dilute oxytocin. So here we stimulate nipple or either we stimulate nipple or we give uh, intravenous dilute oxytocin. So once you give, once once you either stimulate nipple or give IV dilute oxytocins, uh, these are done, uh, these will induce the contractions, okay. So these are done at least till there are at least three contractions. These are done. This uh, stimulation of nipple and IV uh, in the injection of IV dilute oxytocin. These are given at least until there are three. At least there are three contractions which are of 40 seconds duration. And these contractions should occur within 10 minutes. Within 10 minutes, we will have to see whether there are three contractions. At least there should be three contractions. And these three contractions should be for a duration of 40 seconds. And this should continue for at least 10 minutes. Okay. So, you'll have to induce these contractions. Normally, if there is a normal healthy fetus, whenever there is, when, whenever we have induced contractions, then there won't be any decelerations. There will be no decelerations. But if this... Um, if the fetus is already hypoxemic, there can be, uh, it can be due to placental insufficiency or it can be due to any cause. But if the fetus is already hypoxemic, then there is decreased oxygenation and this can lead to decelerations. Okay, so you will have to see the decelerations, whether the, the deceleration is present or not. Okay, so this uh, con uh, contraction stress test, it is interpreted as if it is positive, if the interpretation is positive, then you should see whether there are late decelerations. These late decelerations should be followed, uh, they, they should be present after 50% or more contractions. Whenever there are 50% or more contractions, then you should see whether there are late decelerations. If there are late decelerations after 50% or more contractions, then you can say that it is positive. It is said to be negative if there are no decelerations at all. Okay, if there are no decelerations, then you can say that there is, uh, it is, the test is negative. Sometimes it is also called as equivocal or suspicious. We say it is suspicious if there are intermittent late decelerations. If there are intermittent late decelerations, then we say that the test is equivocal or suspicious. We can say equivocal or hyper, the test is equivocal or hyperstimulatory. If the decelerations occur in while we are hyperstimulating it, if decelerations are seen on hyperstimulation, what is hyperstimulation here? Whenever there are more than six contractions are seen in 10 minutes, that is hyperstimulation. Or if there are uh, contractions which are lasting for 90 seconds, if the contractions are lasting for 90 seconds, then it is 
uh, hyperstimulated. There are two things. One, the, the contractions can be more than six contractions in 10 minutes. Then it is called as decelerations on hyperstimulation. Or when the contractions are lasting for 90 seconds, then it is called as deceleration on hyperstimulation. So these two uh, uh, can be called as equivocal hyperstimulatory. Okay, uh, if there are no contractions, that is, or if the contractions are less than three, that is, there are less than three contractions in 10 minutes, then we call it as unsatisfactory. So, we call it as unsatisfactory if there are less than three contractions in 10 minutes. So, this is how we interpret the contraction stress test. So, what are the contraindications of this contraction stress test? One, if there is a risk of preterm labor, because if we induce the contractions and if the person has a risk of preterm labor, then there is a chance of pre precipitating this risk causing preterm labor. Or if there is preterm rupture of membranes, whenever there is preterm rupture of membranes, the membranes have already been ruptured. As a result, there is a chance that this might lead to labor. Okay, whenever there is a history of uh, uterine surgery. Or C-section. If there is, if, we, if there is a risk, if there is, if we have done uterine surgery or C-section, this can lead to uterine rupture. So, in order to prevent uterine rupture, we don't uh, do contraction stress test in these patients. If there is non-placental previa, even then we don't do the contraction stress test. So, these are the different. Uh, uh, this is how we do the one of the tests which is called as contraction stress test. So thank you guys for watching my lecture. In my next class, I will explain about biophysical profile. Thank you for watching my lecture. If you have any doubts, please comment it in the comment section. If you feel something is inadequate in this lecture, even then comment it in the comment section. Thank you for watching my lecture. Thank you.